Hello dear students, welcome back to my channel Hilo Pharmacology. In today's session, let us learn about a very important drugs under the psychoselective anticholinergics. So the example which you need to remember under the psychoselective anticholinergics are you have five psychoselective anticholinergic agents. So we have oxybutynin, tolterotidin, flavoxate, derifenacin and solifenacin. Please remember, this is a very, very important question you can expect in your exams as well as in competitive exams in the form of MCQs. So again, I will be repeating the drug names. So we have oxybutynin, tolterotidin, flavoxate, derifenacin and solifenacin. Please remember, these drugs are mainly used the treatment of urinary incontinence, urinary incontinence in case of urinary urgency, as well as in case of if there is an increased urinary frequency in cases like benign hypertrophy of prostate, etc. So, if you find this video useful, please do subscribe to my channel and you know, pharmacology and do not forget to share and hit the like button for more updates on pharmacology and its clinical applications. So in the next part two, we are going to see the basic difference between the cholinergic and anticholinergic drugs acting on the bladder and the ureter. Thank you. Hello dear students, welcome back to I Love Pharmacology. So in today's session, we will move on to the part two, the psychoselective anticholinergic topics where we will be discussing about the basic difference between the actions of cholinergic and anticholinergics on bladder. So you can see in the diagram. So it is the bladder and the ureter where you can see this is the bladder and this is the ureter and you can see in the red color. So there are M3 receptors. So this bladder has got a smooth muscles, they are called as tetrazor muscles, which are abundant in M3 receptors, abundant in M3 receptors. So if any drug is stimulating M3 receptor, they are going to cause smooth muscle contraction. Here the smooth muscle being a tetrazor muscle, it will going to contract the tetrazor muscle and it leads to increased frequency of obturation. So, before going to the differences, let us see some basic information that is all the visceral smooth muscles. Remember, all the visceral smooth muscles are innervated by parasympathetic motor innervations. That means to say, they are going to cause contraction of the visceral smooth muscles. So, if there is a parasympathetic innervation, if this parasympathetic innervation is activated, it will lead to visceral smooth muscle contraction. So all these visceral smooth muscles which are innervated by parasympathetic motor innervation can be relaxed by using anticholinergic agents, by using anticholinergic drugs because they are going to block the M3 receptors. So here you can see in this diagram, so if you are using a cholinergic agents or the cholinergic drugs, which will be similar to that of the parasympathetic motor innervation, it will going to stimulate, it will going to stimulate the M3 receptor, it will going to stimulate the M3 receptor which is present in the detrizor smooth muscles of the bladder and what it will lead is, it will lead leads to contraction. So contraction of the detrizor muscle, muscles, smooth muscles and in turn, we should remember that there is an opposite action which will be taking place in the bladder of trigon and the sphincter, which are mediated by alpha 1 receptor. It will going to 
cause relaxation. So there will be contraction of the reticular muscle fibers due to the cholinergic agents or the parasympathetic motor innervation. And simultaneously, there will be relaxation of the bladder trigon as well as the relaxation of the sphincter, which helps in voiding of bladder, which helps in voiding of bladder. So when we consider anticholinergic drugs, anticholinergic drugs, here you can see anticholinergic drug will block the M3 receptor activity, will block the M3 receptor activity thereby. You can see the difference between the previous diagram and the uh, current diagram where you can see there is a increased volume or the increase in the capacity to accumulate the, accommodate the urinary volume. So here you can see that it is these drugs being a recycloselective agent, they will mainly act on the M3 receptor, which are predominantly present on the retrosor muscle fibers of the bladder. So by blocking M3 activity, there won't be any contraction of the retrosor muscle fibers. So thereby you will going to see the relaxation, relaxation of the retrosor muscle fibers. So when there is a relaxation, there will be increased in the capacity or the volume of the bladder so that it can cause urinary retention, especially in case of the urinary retention, especially in case of the older males who are suffering from the prostatic hypertrophy. And apart from that, although it causes relaxant action on the urinary bladder as well as the ureter, there are some beneficial actions also where it increases the bladder capacity increase the bladder capacity and also it will helps in control of detrusor hyperreflexia which will be very helpful in case of patient who are suffering from neurogenic bladder as well as the aneurysis and also it will help in patient with the benign prostatic hypertrophy where there will be increased frequency of urinary urgency or the increased urinary frequency or urinary maturation. In such patient, since there is increase in bladder capacity, it will going to help or control of this urinary urgency symptoms. So this was about the basic difference between the actions of the cholinergic and the anticholinergic agents on the bladder. So if you find this video useful, please do subscribe to my channel, Hello Pharmacology, and do not forget to share and hit the like button for more updates on pharmacology and its clinical applications. In the next video, that is part three, a psychoselective anticholinergy, let us see briefly about the individual drugs and their importance. Thank you. Hello, dear students. Welcome back to my channel, Hello Pharmacology. So in this session, we'll move on to the part three of the psychoselective anticholinergic drugs. So just to recapture you, so you need to remember the drugs under the psychoselective anticholinergic drug. Those are oxybutynin, dolterotidin, flavoxate, derifenacin, and solifenacin. First, we'll take up the oxybutynin. So here you can see that oxybutynin is a if you get any question of oxybutynin or in the entrance exam, please remember it is belongs to the anti muscarinic drug or the anticholinergic drug where they have got high affinity. Please remember a high affinity towards the muscarinic receptor, especially the M3 receptor, M3 receptor, which are present predominantly on the urinary bladder as well as the salivary gland. So what are the actions which are mediated by oxybutynin through M3 receptors? Means it will going to block the M3 receptors. So thereby it causes smooth muscle relaxation, smooth muscle relaxation. And also in addition, it has got local anesthetic property also. So being a vesicoselective drug, it has got vesicoselective action on the bladder where it will be very useful in, in case of patient who are having the instability 
which can lead to increase in the urinary frequency as well as it can uh, if the patient is suffering from any urge incontinence. So where this oxybutynin is indicated, it can be indicated in case of post prostatectomy. Please remember post prostatectomy vesicospasm. Vesicospasm it relieves the vesicospasm as well as the pain. And also in case of neurogenic bladder, in case of spina bifida, in case of bacterial aneurysis. So coming to the side effects of oxybutynin. So when the oxybutynin is given through oral route, so the side effects will be a little bit more when compared to the oxybutynin which is administered through intravesical installation. So intravesical installation will also increase the bladder capacity to retain the urinary volume. Along with that, intravesical installation causes lesser side effects than the oral oxybutynin. And also remember that oxybutynin is metabolized through CYP3A4. So if the patient is on CYP3A inhibitor, Four inhibitors like metoconazole, etc. You need to reduce the dose of the oxybutynin and route of administration is through oral route. And 5 mg is administered BD or thrice a day. So, this was about the oxybutynin. Next, moving on to the talterotidin, which is relatively M3 selective muscarinic antagonist which preferentially acts on the urinary bladder. So please remember that it is less likely to cause anticholinergic side effects that is the most common being the dry mouth. So oxybutynin was causing the side effects like dryness of the mouth but with the tall terror then the dryness of the mouth side effects will be less likely to occur. So tolterodin can be used in the overactive bladder like in symptoms like urinary increase in urinary frequency or urinary urgency. So it also metabolizes through CYP3A4 enzyme. The dose has to be reduced if you are combining this drug with the CYP3A4 inhibitors. And also remember that this tolterodin is available through the strain release as well as extended release tablets. Next, moving on to the flavoxate, which is similar to that of the oxybutynin, and also it is used in the treatment of additionally, it can be used in the treatment of this urea, which are associated with lower urinary tract infection. So, this is given at 200 milligram thrice a day. So, one of the important drug following trivoxate is the derifenacin. So here you can see that the T of this very long that is 13 to 19 hours. So the extended release tablets of derifenacin can act up to 24 hours. The doses you can notice here just once a daily administration is enough 7.5 to sorry it is 15 milligrams. And solifenacin, it is almost similar to that of the derifenacin. It is also indicated in the treatment of overactive bladder. So this was about the three parts of discussion on the safe selective anticholinergic agent. If you find this video useful, please do subscribe to my channel, Hello Pharmacology, and do not forget to share and hit the like button for more updates on pharmacology and its clinical application. Thank you.